Hi, this is Merlin and this is the first video in a series about control theory. In this video, I will give you an introduction to control system. In control system, we want to control the behavior of the system according to our needs. It can be a large system or just a part of the system. Applications of control system include automobiles, robotics, quadcopters, spacecraft, etc. Consider an example where a person wants to move the position of the chair from one point to another. In this case, he will have to apply a force onto the chair so as to move. By applying necessary force, he will be able to move the chair to the desired position. The variation of the position with respect to time can be plotted as shown. Here we can consider the position or displacement as the output variable and force as the input variable. So we can say that the output variable will be the variable that is needed to be controlled. In this case, the, it is the position of the chair and the input variable that is given to the system is the variable that is used to control the system. In this case, input is the force. This process can be represented by a block diagram as shown where the block represents the chair which is the system here and the output which is the variable to be controlled is the position and the controlling variable is the force which is given as the input. Now we can expand the block diagram further by including the person himself. So the person is producing the force based on his desire to move the chair to a particular position so the actual input can be said as his desire to move the chair and he himself will produce a force which then will move the position of the chair so here the input can be considered as his desire to move the chair and the output is the position of the chair now if we consider the fact that the person is continuously monitoring whether or not the position has been reached if we consider that point we can add a feedback element to this block diagram. That is, the position of the chair is continuously monitored by the human and he is producing a force according to that. So now this system has become a closed loop system. Basically, all control systems can be classified into two, open loop system and a closed loop system. The structure of an open loop system is as shown. It contains a plant. The system that is needed to be controlled is called a plant and the desired output response is obtained with the help of a controller which controls the actuator to give the desired response. In this case, the output of the system is not continuously monitored. So once you give the input, you have no control over the system. The other type of control system is called closed loop control system. In this case, an additional feedback path is given. Here, the output of the system is continuously measured with the help of a sensor and is compared with the desired output response and an error signal is produced. Controller controls the plant based on that error signal with the help of actuator. Let's go through some examples of open loop system. Let's consider a simple example, a light in our room. So, we want to switch on the light whenever the room is dark. This is done with the help of a switch. We can have two controls on or off. So let us draw this process as a block diagram. In this case, the room itself is the plant. That is, we need to control the light intensity of the room according to our needs. This is controlled by a switch and a lamp, which in turn is controlled by a human being based on his need. Now consider the case where there were no switch. In that case, we won't be able to do anything. The switch will remain as it is and we won't be able to control it. So since there is no switch, there won't be any control. Now consider the case of a fan. Here also, the fan is switched on based on the temperature conditions in the room. Here, apart from the on-off control, speed of the fan can also be varied using a regulator. In this example, we can see that there are seven different control options. So, by adding a simple regulator into the system, we have additional five controls in this system. This is also an example of an open loop system, but compared to that of the light situation, here we have more number of controls. Here also, the plant is the room and the variable that is needed to be controlled is temperature and this is done with the help of a switch and regulator which in turn is controlled by a human being. Some other examples of open loop systems are traffic light and unbox. 
in case of traffic light there is no active feedback of the present traffic conditions the control signals are simply pre-programmed similarly in the case of an and box there is no automatic temperature control there we are just manually using the and box now let's consider some examples of a closed loop system in this video we can see that the driver is actively trying to control the position of the car this is done by the help of the steering mechanism that is present in the car and he is actively monitoring the position of the car while driving through his eyes this is an example of a closed loop system we can draw the block diagram as shown here in this case plant in this system is car and the variable that is needed to be controlled is the position of the car this is done through the help of steering mechanism which is in turn controlled by the driver based on the feedback that he is getting from his eyes. Another example is the air conditioner in our room. We can see that the temperature of the room is being automatically controlled by the air conditioner. The block diagram for the air conditioner can be drawn as shown. Here also the plant is the room itself and the variable that is needed to be controlled is room temperature and the room temperature is sensed with the help of a thermostat and is compared with the desired room temperature and based on that the compressor of the air conditioner is controlled by the controller thus maintaining the room temperature. Other examples of closed loop systems are quadcopters, spacecraft, aeroplane, robotics etc. So now we can finally define the control system. A control system is an interconnection of components forming a system configuration that will provide a desired response. The different components in the control system are plant, controller, actuator, sensor, etc. The steps in designing a control system. First, we have to identify the plant, that is the system which is needed to be controlled. Then we have to identify the variable that is needed to be controlled, which will be the output of the plant. The variable can be a room temperature, brightness in the room, etc. Then we have to decide upon the specifications of the variables to be controlled. For example, in case of an air conditioner, we may not be able to maintain the temperature at a particular point. So we will define a range. For example, if we want to maintain the temperature at 25 degrees Celsius, but in practice, we will be not able to do that. So we will decide upon a range, maybe plus or minus one degree Celsius. In this case, that range is the specification of that variable. So we have to decide a specification for the variable that is needed to be controlled. Then we have to select a suitable system configuration that is whether we need to have an open loop system or a closed loop system or a much complicated systems like multi loop systems we have to decide upon that. Then we have to obtain the mathematical model for the plant. Mathematical model might be in differential equations so we have to write down the equations and obtain the model of the system. Then we have to select the suitable actuators and sensors that are available in the market and obtain their mathematical model also. So after that we need to decide a suitable controller that is best suited for this application. So after designing the controller we need to either conduct experiments or conduct simulations to check whether the desired specifications are met. If the desired specifications are not met then we have to repeat the process. Each of these design steps will be discussed in detail in future videos. In the next video, we will be discussing about the evolution of control theory throughout history. Thanks for watching and if you found the video useful, hit the like button and subscribe this channel to get future videos.